Yeah, hire you. You know, put your PayPal and all that stuff down there, and then they can they can do that. <laughs> what did you think of Jamal James um, getting beat up by this Russian? What's his name? Boot Butiev. He basically just strong armed him. It looked like he just kind of mugged him. It was uh, what was that guy's name? The five foot four middleweight that's doing a bid right now, Kurtzidis. Um, uh, do you remember that guy? He was he was a real short middleweight that was built like a fire hydrant. It kind of looked like an impression of him just beating up people, just put jamal jamal james has always been a weird one for me he felt like kind of like a regional fighter that was a really nice guy never really had the strongest punches never really was the fastest guy but it felt like his willpower his conditioning and his mindset won him fights even when he shouldn't kind of win fights yeah i mean there was a lot of smothering in that fight but he just kept him in the ropes too long too long and look the scorecard the showtime the showtime had guys had it what um they had it. They had it tied up going inside that round where, where he got where we got stopped. But me watching, I was like, man, he's getting beat up. He is getting beat up. He's getting muled. He's getting pressured. He's getting and yeah, he was landing some couple couple shots, but it wasn't it wasn't effective at all. So a lot of people uh, there was people out there that didn't like the stoppage. Um, I think it was a fair stoppage. And you had every time he gets hit, you just see a b- blood, <laughs> you know, his own blood running through the back of 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 his opponent's back. It was a good stoppage to me, in my opinion. I think that but Jerome James. It, mm. It's a tricky stoppage, right? Because it's like if one of those shots lands and he goes out bad, then everyone's looking at the ref. So the ref, I feel like he started making a, a score a a calendar no i'm not saying it right a shot clock of like you need to respond a certain way because this is getting dangerous for me and i saw some of these stoppages in fresno where it wasn't really like the punch itself that stopped the fight it's like the way you're reacting in general i don't want you to get hit with a big shot because you're just doing stuff that doesn't look like you're protecting yourself at all times yeah you don't got the poker face you know he had the poker face it's like the exhaust face oh oh one more and, and of course, the people got to know the accumulation leading up to the stoppage. It's not necessarily that, oh, my God, he's just stopping because you can hit him a good two clean shots and the referee stop it. You know, we've seen that before. But it's, the, it's what happened. Round one, round two, what led up to the stoppage. And the referee is like, OK, man, I've been seeing you getting hit too clean for like the past 20 minutes. I think I need to stop this. And keep in mind, I wasn't scoring the fight because I'm watching the fight. So I'm not sitting there like, okay. Mm -hmm. but it it felt like if I was working the corner for James from the fourth round on, he needed to make a major adjustment because it felt like he was finding himself on the ropes too much. This guy's getting in without having to think too much. The jab isn't very effective at keeping Mm -hmm. this guy off of him. When this guy is on him, he's either smothering him, weighing down, being heavy on his arms, bringing lactic acid to the muscles or he's working. And it was just, it looked to me perceptually, the other guy was fighting his fight. James wasn't fighting his fight. And that's always a bad sign. Yeah. He wasn't using his advantage, his reach advantage. Um, He didn't control range at all. Um, Dude was just coming in anytime he wanted. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't, I I know he was going to lose that. I, 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 the way that I, I wasn't even scoring the fight, but when I was looking at it, I thought that he was losing at least four rounds in my opinion, the way that it looked like. Cause he didn't control nothing. Nothing was effective. So I, I, I'm not sure how the showtime, I probably got to have, have to see the fight again and see why the showtime um, personnel had, had it very, very close. But it's also one of these things where if you're live at a fight, I've had some crazy scorecards because sometimes sitting ringside or being in a corner is the worst view in the house. Mm-hmm. Like you don't really see what's happening. So we don't know where that score was seated. If they're ringside, you might be looking at someone who's, just seeing certain types of action. Then we also got to think about, is he rewarding what he thinks is clean punching, which could favor James because he's moving back. Maybe he's landing more knuckle blows, but then we got to figure out what do they deem as a clean punch? Is it the head going back? Is it a knuckle shot? Because I'm sure uh, Butiev, his punches probably weren't all that clean all the time, but they sure yeah. landed and they sure were effective in my yeah. opinion, because they made the damage show. So I think that the issue we have a lot of times with boxing scoring is it's not like the NBA where the Nets play the Warriors and it's 80 to 95. It's it comes down to like, how do you see what's working? And I always try to think about if if you took a fifth grader and sat him at the ring and asked him who who's winning, that's probably the person that's winning because a fifth (laughs) grader typically could just tell you 
who who's getting the better of this? And if I was if I brought a fifth grader, I think 10 of them would say Butiev was being with yeah. the guy that's more effective. Yeah. Facts, facts. Trust me. I had them, them, them scorecards where people got on me. Yo, you are biased. How you got that scorecard? Say, if I was seated, you got to understand where I was seated. And especially if I like that, when, you know, is a, a lot of, a lot of actions in the corner, you compromise the judges because where, where, you know, I, I'll give you an example. When, when to the Jamel Charlo fight, I was seated right when, when he got hurt. Right. So his back is, on is, is his back is, I'm only seeing his back. So if, if um, Brian Castagna was hitting him with body shots, I can't see it from my angle. You know, I could only see when he got boom and he got and he got hit. So me, I'm not counting a lot of those shots because it's compromising me. It's not in the middle of the ring. And this is why, um, you know, trainers always say keep the fight in the middle of the ring so the judges can see your work. So, yeah. Well, my example is I went to Steve Cunningham versus Amir Imam, not Amir Imam, Amir Mansoor in philly years ago and i want to say i had it like a one round fight for steve live because like you got to remember mansoor is this big physical guy every it's like dillian kind of like a dillian white guy every punch you hear in the arena it echoes i watched it on tv and it was like a blowout for steve and it was mm. just kind of like the perception of being two to three and i almost feel like my scorecard live was actually a better scorecard <laughs> because you should kind of sometimes like a guy like Dillian White, he's not the most effective fighter, but he hits hard. And you mm -hmm. should kind of score for the fact that he hits hard. Ruslan Provodnikov, he can get out boxed, but you probably should weight those power punches as his terms of effectiveness. Like he's mm -hmm. not going to sit there and hit you with a jab and think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and just talking about that fight, the effective punch that I was hearing was pop when Charlo was landing the shots compared to Castaño. I'm like, wow, like you could hear it. Like, all right, these shots is hurting Castaño. So, but I had, I had uh, um, Charlo winning and everybody was on me like, well, you don't, you don't know accent. Da, da, da. <laughs> then I saw it. And then I saw the replay when I got, when I got home and it was a different type of fight. I still, I, I didn't, I gave Castaño like two. Now I can see where the 14, the draw comes in. But, you know, it's my angle. So people got to understand that, you know. I mean, that's a really close fight, to be honest. Like, I'd yeah. say that fight is a fight neither guy won. Like, it was up for grabs and no one really separated themselves. So that's a fight that just comes down to what you're scoring for. Uh, Michelle Riviera, he beat Matisse Romero. A lot of people think Michelle Riviera is going to be one of the guys that comes out of the late lightweight division. Mm -hmm. He's beaten a lot of guys. He beat the guy that beat Carlos Balderos. Uh, What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey, and I appreciate you watching this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment with suggestions, which is the reason you're seeing this video. And also, if this is just a single video and you're saying, where's the full interview? Look at the upper left-hand corner and you can find the full interview or check in our video section. We're rapidly trying to improve this channel and it takes support from not just myself, but also people that enjoy the channel to keep me motivated and try to give you the best boxing content. Be sure to go to itrboxing.com for all of your boxing needs. This is Luke.